Welcome to the tutorial on placing a short leg walking cast. Short leg cast can be utilized in both a weight bearing and non weight bearing modality. The short leg cast can be utilized for a variety of injuries that involve both the foot, the ankle, or even distal tibia and fibula fractures, as well as ankle sprains. Before you begin, you'll need to acquire some very specific supplies that you can see laid out here but we'll go into more detail based on each child's size. For children under the age of two years, we recommend always placing a long leg cast in order to reduce the risk of the cast coming off of the child. In order to do that, these are the supplies that are required to place a cast in that age group. For those that are older than age two, and perhaps up to age four, this is the recommendations for the size of rolls and the number of rolls that you would require. From age four to seven, you can see that we go up to the three inch rolls in order to achieve the cast placement. As the child continues to get older, and perhaps more importantly, larger, you may require more rolls of Weberil and fiberglass. At age 10, you might need to consider using a four inch roll instead of the three inch rolls in order to achieve placement of the cast. Placement of a short leg cast does require the utilization of a second partner so the leg can be held in a good position while the cast is being applied. There are two methods to placing the stockinette. The first is as seen here, where you're placing a full length stockinette. In order to do that, you do need to cut out the anterior aspect at the ankle so as not to achieve any wrinkles underneath the cast. A second method is to place it in a more segmental fashion, as you'll be watching here. The advantages of the segmental fashion is that if you're worried about compartment syndrome, you have to do less cutting close to the skin because the stockinette can cause issues regarding compartment syndrome, but it is more futzy in application. Once you have your stockinette in place, you will then apply the Webril or the sheet cotton in a fashion so as to cover at a rate about one and a half depth all around the foot, ankle, and the leg. Being sure to well pad over the toes and at the proximal tibia. It's also important that you tear the cotton as you pull it into place, as you will see here, in order so that it folds nicely and lays flat against the skin and all the contours of the child. Once all the cotton is in place, as you see here, it is then important to make sure that the heel is well padded. So you'll see this applicator go all the way down and then really work over the heel to make sure that the thickness at the heel sets it up so that it's not going to create any blistering or skin issues. And once again, the tearing effect is applied so that it uh, lays down nicely. When using the fiberglass, it's important to make sure obviously that it's wet, but not very damp. The application begins by wrapping around the toes in order to reinforce the toe plate. One method of doing that is actually to create a little reinforcement splint as seen here and then starting the wrap around the toes. As you place the fiberglass at the toes, it's important to have a slightly oblique placement so that it is longer at the big toe and smaller at the shorter small toe. You then apply it around the ankle as the first go, almost like a small little stockinette. It is important sometimes to feather back and forth over the heel so that you minimize the amount of fiberglass being placed anteriorly. Once you have applied this small little sock amount, you can then address the tibia with further placement up and making sure that you remain oblique proximally as well, where it's longer anteriorly and shorter posteriorly in order to allow the leg to bend nicely at the knee. It's also important to make sure that your holder is not placing their fingers into the fiberglass. We can then fold down our stockinette predominantly first at the uh, upper tibia. Lower down, it's important to make a reinforcing splint that will allow this to be a walking cast, as you can see here. This is done by rolling out the fiberglass ahead of time into this splint kind of fashion, and then applying, as you see here. Once this is done around the foot, we then pull the stockinette down past the toes, However, you'll see the way that we have placed this, it will require cutting out the dorsal portion so that you can see the top of the toes, which is often important in terms of checking for compartment syndrome and swelling. 
Once that's completed, the stock ending net will get pulled down over the top of this, and you'll have a better visualization of what this looks like at the end of the video. But with that stock ending net then pulled down into position, uh, you can have the holder transition in order to maintain the dorsiflexion of the foot, but sometimes it is better to keep the fingers within the cast so they don't apply the fingers to the bottom of the cast as he's doing here. The fiberglass then gets rolled over this lower stockinette in order to capture that nicely. And then we'll proceed all the way back up around the ankle, being sure not to overdo the anterior aspect. And then finishing with our oblique placement of the fiberglass once again, proximally. So now it's time to start talking about a few pitfalls. The first was the discussion regarding having too much fiberglass anteriorly. When you have that, and then it comes time to actually take the cast off, that thick fiberglass will create excessive heat with the saw, and you can create cast burns. So it's very important that you're paying attention to not having more fiberglass in one place over the other. And you can see in this image how thin it is in the back and how thick it is in the front. The second thing you see in this image is this wrinkling that anteriorly. This comes when we begin to do the actual molding of the cast and then you ultimately change the position of the foot. So you need to make sure once you start applying the fiberglass and honestly when you start applying the web rail, you can't change the position of the foot relative to the tibia and this needs to be maintained throughout the entirety of the application of the cast. You can also see here that this is a Gillespie type fracture which means that having the foot in a plantar grade position is not actually optimal. So this should not be a weight-bearing cast. This patient needed to have a non-weight-bearing cast with the foot in slight plantar flexion in order to adjust for the fact that this was a Gillespie-type fracture. But now let's presume that you're actually placing it in an appropriate patient that does not need to be in a plantar flexed position where it's actually pointing towards the floor and it's actually neutral to the floor you have actually not wrinkled the cast, you've maintained it the whole time, and now we're going to apply the appropriate molds. You can see in this image now that the molds, it can be actually no mold on the heel, or it could have a minimal mold, or actually a good mold. The good mold actually makes it so that it contours with the Achilles tendon and wraps around the heel of the foot. So we're gonna minimize the effect of getting an ulcer, like you would see in this no mold cast where that kid is unfortunately going to have ulcerations on the back of his heel. Use the palms of your hands in order to make these molds. Keep the foot in a good position. Create no wrinkles. This is the objective of the molding sequence at the end of the cast placement. Your final product should look like this on the back of the heel. Where there's a nice contour that follows the Achilles and there's no wrinkles either in the back or anteriorly. The oblique nature of the cast proximally allows the patient to bend their knee so they can actually walk and go up and down stairs, as seen here. And in this last image, you can see how the toes look, where they're visible to check for swelling, but also protection, so when they are walking, they're not dangling off the edge of the cast. Thank you for watching this video and learning our pitfalls and pearls of the short leg walking cast.